Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Know How is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of Know How is brought to you by Pro XPN. Pro XPN is a virtual private network that allows you to use the internet the way it should be, anonymously and unfiltered. For 20% off your new account, go to proxpn.com slash twit and use the code KH20. You guys requested it, and today you'll know how to install OwnCloud on a web server. Welcome to Know How. I'm Aya Zaktar, and this is the show where we give you a tech project you can do yourself. But in this case, you guys, the audience, decided to give me a challenge. You guys have been asking since episode one, 53 weeks ago. You guys are saying, hey, you rolled your own cloud, but what about own cloud? This is a, uh, this is a piece of software which I was not familiar with, but you guys kept asking and asking and asking, and today you're going to know how to install own cloud. Now, if you're wondering what OwnCloud is and you were like me, you're like, what is the deal with this? What is it? It's an open source uh, uh, a thing that allows you to access your, your files, your music, whatever you want. And you can actually install this on like an Amazon S3 server, your own web host, even your own home server if you wanted. And what we're going to do today is we're going to install it to one of our host, uh, a hosted install, a web installer version, because that's the simplest way to go. And that's what we're going to try to do first. Now, setting up OwnCloud is actually pretty simple. So we're going to run through this really easily. So what you're going to do is go to owncloud.org, and you're going to install OwnCloud Server 5 to your actual host. <clears throat> so in this case here, you can see you can install, you're going to, you're going to download the uh, tar or zip file, and then you're going to see this notification. What you have to do in this case is simply download a file. It's called setup-owncloud.php. When you take this file, you're going to download it to your, to your hard drive, and then you're going to go over to your server, wherever that might be. Now, in this case, I know a lot of you guys want to do the super advanced thing. You wanted to check and do it on your own Raspberry Pi. That's coming later. This is the web installer. This is if you want to get your hands dirty with this, get familiar with OwnCloud before you start doing it on your own server. So what we're going to do is just download that file, and we're going to go to our hosted service. Now, I use Bluehost, and you can see this is what Bluehost looks like. This is the uh, little hosting area. We move on to the uh, sub subdomain. We're going to want to host own cloud in a subdomain, so it makes it a lot easier to find later on. So in this case, I'm going to create a subdomain in Bluehost called owncloud.is.tv. I happen to have the domain is.tv. You just hit create, and before you know it, you've got a brand new subdomain on your actual server. From there, we've got to upload that file, right? We download that file really quickly. We're going to go into our file manager, and we're going to go to our document root. In this case, it's owncloud.is.tv. You would hit OK. And all you have to do now is hit upload. You just upload this one file. You can see at the very top this one file, setup-owncloud.php. You're going to select that and upload that. It takes about a second. What you do from there is you simply go to your web browser, and you type in like owncloud.yourdomain.com and you will see the setup wizard. This is a very, very simple procedure. So you can see the setup wizard right now. You'll hit next, and what happens is it does a dependency check for you. So if you're missing anything, OwnCloud uses PHP 5.3 or higher. If your server does PHP 5.2 or something lower, you're going to run into an error here. So you'll just hit next after installing in a subdirectory. And if everything works, in under two minutes, I kid you not, when I did this last night, when it does work, it takes two minutes and then you see success. You're all set right there. But now you have to set up an admin account. Do yourself a favor. Give yourself a strong password. I use LastPass. I don't even know what my password is. It's this giant long string. So good luck hacking that one. And then you're greeted with a welcome to own cloud. You can actually get a whole bunch of applications for your desktop. And then you can, there are two applications for iOS and Android. They're pay. They cost about a buck. Uh, and we'll get to that in just a second. Let's take a quick break and thank our friends at ProXPN. Uh, they sponsored today's episode. 
Now, ProXPN is a global VPN. That's a virtual private network that works with almost any internet connection. It creates a secure encrypted tunnel through which all of your online data passes back and forth. So any online application you use, like your web browser, your email, file sharing, instant messaging, anything you can think of, you can use it with ProXPN. And it keeps everything you do online hidden. So if anybody's trying to spy on you, they can't see what's going on. It'll also disguise your physical location. So if you're somewhere, I don't know, in the US and you want to access something in the UK, you'll have access to that thanks to ProXPN servers. You get unfettered access to any website or online service, no matter where you live or where you travel to. Now, my personal experience, I like to use Wi-Fi instead of using my data connection. You see all these public Wi-Fi spots, you know, Starbucks or like McDonald's. You don't know if they're really secure. If you're using a VPN like ProXPN, you know that everything is secure because they use the complete online privacy because they use a 512-bit encryption tunnel. It works via OpenVPN or PPTP. You get to choose. If your ISP has a six strikes rule, you can protect yourself against that. And you can keep your personal internet usage private at work. So if let's say you wanted to watch Twit or you wanted to go to Reddit, you can bypass internet filtering and blocked websites. You can also bypass geographical restrictions for internet content and online video. Because sometimes the stuff you love might be in Asia or the UK or the US. You have worldwide servers from ProXPN. ProXPN makes your internet connection absolutely region free. And they've got software for Windows and Mac. It gives you advanced controls. It allows you to select the programs and ports you want to use. And you can route them anonymously through ProXPN servers. ProXPN also works with your mobile devices. So if you've got iOS or Android, you can use ProXPN. You can use it with your data plan or your Wi-Fi. And you don't even need an app for it. They, and if you get confused, don't even worry. They've got world-class customer support. And if you ever pay attention to the Twit network, you know Steve Gibson. He's on Security Now, big privacy advocate. He gave it a great review on Security Now. So that's good enough for me. Go to ProXPN.com slash Twit for more information and to sign up. ProXPN premium accounts are normally $9.95 a month or $74.95 for an entire year. But we've got a special offer for you guys. If you use the code KH20, you'll receive 20% off for the lifetime of your account. That's less than five bucks a month of the yearly plan. And if you're not satisfied, by the way, you can cancel within seven days for a full refund. So go to proxpn.com slash twit and sign up with the code KH20. We thank ProXPN for their support of know-how. So if you've got your own cloud, we're back to our whole cloud universe, you have to go ahead and go pick up a desktop sync client. Now, those clients are available for Windows, Mac, Linux, whatever you want. So it's pretty simple. Uh, right now, we just download a little file, and you set this up. So you can see you get to set up your actual local folder and your own cloud. When you connect to your own cloud, you can see all you got to do is put in your server address, your username and password. It doesn't, you have to like cut and paste from LastPass, at least in my case. Once you've decided to install the client's software on your computer, what you will see is the web interface. So right now, we've got our web interface set up. This is live. This is something I set up last night. And you'll see that I've got files, music, contacts, calendar, journal. I've got all of these options here. Now, this allows me to have access to my music because I told I told, uh, op told OwnCloud that I wanted my music folder there. So I'm going to play some music through here. This is the music player. It uses Flash. If you have Flash Block on, turn it off, like I was checking the earlier day. I'm going to hit play. I don't know if it's going to be loud or not. Let's see what happens here. I don't know if you can, you can hear it through my mic. It's actually coming through the, the audio there. It does take a little bit to start up the audio. I've noticed that. Uh, the speed is not exactly spectacular, and I think that depends on where your host is. So my music collection, it took it a while to scan. You're uploading everything. You're still uploading everything to a particular place. The music is broken out for you, so you don't actually have to tell it to go to a specific music folder. It's going to do all the organization for you. There's even a search function, which let's see how good it does. Living color. Like, it's trying to index the files right now. I found this to be a little bit slow at this point, a little bit, uh, not, not super spectacular. The files are OK. I mean, when you go into your files, you can see everything you had in that, in that format. They've even got apps, though. So if you want to add things, like this is uh, my journal. Now you can see what's happening here. I'm actually using OwnCloud. You're seeing a big white screen. 
it is really slow. Maybe it's Bluehost or it's the software. I can't tell right now because I'm only testing it on one piece, uh, one server right now, but I found this thing uh, pretty slow. Even with a fast connection, it's a little bit push a button, walk away, push a button, walk away. Not a big fan of that personally. Let's go back to this little journal aspect. This was an application I actually installed last night and let's see if any of the stuff's there right now. I don't see anything. I put in three entries. Let's see if I can add one. And you can see it's, it's okay, so on the air with OnCloud. OnCloud, easy for me to say. And you can see it's not exactly the most polished looking piece, uh, application you can find. You can also get other applications. The way you do that is you go to your username, you pick apps, and you just install what you want. So this, again, here we go. And we wait and we twiddle our thumbs. This is the reality of OwnCloud. So it's free, it's open source. The software, the client software is free for your Mac or Windows machine or Linux. You gotta pay a buck for Android or iOS if you wanna access that. Uh, let's go into these apps here. You can see there's a list on the left. You can go to, let's say I wanna have LDAP or tasks. I would like to have a task manager. You just hit enable and you wait and then you see it instantly shows up. Sometimes it's fast, sometimes it's not. So we can add a task. I haven't even tried this one before, so let's write it here. Let's see. Give Ayaz a raise. Okay, we'll put that right there. Or I'm gonna add another task. Let's see how this works. I'm testing this out. This is really, this is new to me. Buy a hamburger. Okay. So these are, this is what my usual to-do list looks like, by the way. Usually I tell myself to pay me more and buy myself a hamburger. So you can see that it's, it's what's the word for this? Serviceable. That's own cloud in a nutshell. So to set it up is not so difficult, but I did want to show you something. I want to show you some troubleshooting that I went through the other day. So when I was installing this, I ran into this error. On my screen right now, you could see something that says dependency check. Now, when you hit that setup and you hit install, and then it says it's gonna check for dependencies, it's looking for PHP 5.3 or higher. Now, in this case, you can see dependencies not found. That threw me off a bit, so I had to do some research. And what actually happens is, even in Bluehost, so if you go into uh, the control panel and you go to the PHP manager and you change the PHP to something higher than 5.3, what happens in my case in particular, my case had a subdomain, and it was a shared domain actually. So I had finitecomedy.com, which is a site I, I own, and PHP changed for that particular domain, not any other shared domain. And to fix that, I had to go into the control panel and then edit the HT access file to tell it to use PHP 5.4. Now that might seem a little scary. It's actually relatively easy. It might not be the case with your host. This is a very particular case with mine because Bluehost does not propagate the PHP change to every domain you have there, just the one, the first one you actually registered. So if you run into that, don't fear, there's an easy way to fix it. And if you're wondering, by the way, how the heck am I supposed to remember that? HT access, that seems like that's difficult to remember. Don't worry, we're gonna have full show notes at twit.tv slash kh. We write lots of show notes, or I do. I just type them all up and try to make sure that you have the most complete information you can find. We've got instructions, we've got links, We've got the past episodes. We've got uh, audio versions of this if you just want to listen to it, HD versions of this if you want to watch it on the big screen. If you want to see our tiny fonts on the big screen, you could do that. That's an option. Uh, and that's always great if you want to find stuff. I just don't think it does anything particularly amazingly well to the point where you would leave Dropbox or leave Pogo Plug, other than the fact that it's open source so you do have a lot more control over it and you have this sense of peace you're not worried about Dropbox being hacked. You're not worried about uh, uh, SkyDrive being hacked. You're more concerned about your particular host being hacked. So if Amazon S3 services get hit, then you might be affected. But this is the kind of thing that, while it does allow you to have more control, it just doesn't seem up to snuff compared to the other products that exist. So if you really care about security, or you really want to make sure that it's about open source, own cloud's great, but if you want, you know, if you want to have reliance or reliability, that is, I still think that Dropbox and other solutions like SkyDrive might be the better choice for right now. We're going to take a little, we're going to switch things and we're going to talk to our know-it-alls. We got an email. So let's, uh, let's go check in with those know-it-alls, shall we? Okay, so I got an email from David. He says, how you doing, Ayaz? 
I'm doing okay. Uh, your show is my favorite on the Twit Network. Well, thank you. You're doing a great job. I've seen your video on the old channel, This Old Nerd. This is an older program I used to do. And how to ditch your landline phone with the UMA service, but that was three years ago. Can you do an updated video on, on know-how, but with UMA and an Android device with updated programs to use that? Thank you. Now, David, I'd like to alert you to episode 11 of, of Know How. We did show with an iPod Touch, but I believe you'll be able to do very similar things. So if you go to twit.tv slash kh, you'll see all of these notes, and you'll see all of the past episodes. So definitely go back in there and start going through it, because we have some great stuff there available for you guys. If you want to get in contact with us, and you have a question about either a past episode, a new, you want to come up with a new show idea, any of those things, there's lots of ways to get in contact with us. The first thing I love to use is Google+. We've got a community of over 3,500 people at this point. gplus.to slash twitkh. That's the easiest way to go. Unless you're on Google+, you can just do a search for Twit Know How. You'll find us. And right there, when people write their ideas, everyone gets to see it. I love that. We've had people write in with better designs for book scanners or asking us to do own cloud or to do a raid. And we still haven't done a raid episode. We've got to do a raid episode. But they have a lot of public stuff there. It's really great to see it there. That's one option. Option two, you can always use Twitter. You, we have a hashtag. Uh, use hashtag TwitKH. Always searching for that. I'm always looking for that. And when I find a great idea, I favorite it. We might show your uh, feedback on the air. And thirdly, we have this thing called email. We still use email. You can send us an email at knowhow at twit.tv. I, I do like any emails. We get to check that out. But I still really love Google Plus because everybody gets to have a say in it. They really are very active there. And uh, we're also active on the email, but it's a little easier for Google Plus. That, that's pretty much the way to get in contact with us. So let's see. Is there anything else you guys want to know? You guys, that's right, the advanced stuff. You wanted to know own cloud on a Raspberry Pi. I promise you guys we will do own cloud on a Raspberry Pi. Not right now, but we will do it soon. So that's coming up. You got to do. The, you got to learn the beginning before you start doing the crazy stuff. That pretty much does it for us. Now that you know how to use OwnCloud, go do it.